you know, when you're looking at politics and then also the topic we're talking about, which is trying to raise children that are in multiracial families or children of one race being raised by parents of another race, I think we're confronting realities that for so long have been overlooked. You know, I, I look at this in my own life. So I have this picture here up for a reason. So my biological son is Taishan. And then my husband brought my daughter, Samantha, to the marriage. And then Tori and Dwayne are two of my cousin's children who I've helped to raise. And, you know, this just kind of shows what our family looks like. And we are often looking at elected leaders as that they're going to solve things. And sometimes the problem is more complicated, but it's also the solution might be easier. You know, Dwayne was at his 21st birthday, which was just him and two friends at a local restaurant when a white male decided to come up to the group and say some very racist things to Dwayne. And it really hit home to me in a couple ways. Obviously you have righteous anger being as a parent, but second, you're thinking this is a well-established loved place. It, it's a great restaurant to go to. They were sitting at the bar minding their own business. Not a single person stepped in to try to diffuse the situation. It was just an unsolicited person coming up and telling Dwayne he didn't belong there. And so first I thought, just shock. Nobody came to the rescue. The second thing was, if I were in that same area of the restaurant, would I have even known what's, what went on? So it raised to me, you know, we talk a lot about privilege. And I think there is privilege, but I think sometimes we hear it in our own terms. So how I hear privilege is there are things I can do and I'm less likely to be held accountable than maybe somebody else. And that, that goes for anything. So would I have taken my privilege or my good fortune to intervene in a situation? What I've even noticed. So what I took away from that situation, besides just being angry that nobody stepped in and here this poor soul is trying to celebrate their birthday and now handling a situation that they're not prepared to handle. I thought I need to be more aware of my surroundings. I need to not necessarily be a busybody, but if I were to hear something like that, do I take my ability as a mom, as a woman to intervene and say, hey, you know, looks like these guys are having some good times. Can I help you? You know, what do I bring to the table and how can I assist? Um, and that was my real wake up call of last year. And I like to think I'm aware of a lot of issues but I never thought this would happen in our community. This is a good restaurant. Now, I'm not saying that the restaurant endorsed this, but I think everybody was so shocked. Nobody did anything. And here's this young person left to defend themselves. And it, it, it made me feel, I think we all can solve some of these problems, especially with racial tension, discrimination, whatever the issue is. If we say, what can I bring to the table for a solution? Instead, I hear, well, they need to pass this bill. They need to pass that law. Well, that man, he was filled with some hate in his heart. A law wasn't going to change that. I'm a little bit skeptical of any political party that's going to be the salvation of our children. If we are looking for a salvation of our children, we should look first to Jesus Christ and then look within our hearts and say, what do I bring to the table? What are my biases? What are the things I need to improve upon? What are the things I can do to use my platform to elevate the issues and maybe bring some awareness to people who just, they don't know. They don't know what people of color go through. Additional opportunity, but that's what's hard is we're looking to DC to solve our problems. DC has its place, Lansing has its place. If we want a bright world for our children, we, it starts at home, it starts with our friends, it starts with honest conversations. And a lot of people don't want to have them. I, you know, I think back, I gave birth at 22. The older I get, the less I know. And then when I think back, there's always going to be parental regret. I could have done something better. I should have done something better. And when I look at raising children who are of a different race than me, my biggest regret is this community, I felt embraced them so much. And they were always on athletic teams with people of different nationalities, including, you know, uh, a kid who was adopted 
out of Ethiopia. I mean, you just had it. You just had all these different nationalities coming together. And I feel like when they hit 18, bam, hey, guess what? You're going to leave this utopian neighborhood, this utopian community, and you're going to hit with racism. And then you start seeing, well, wait a second. This racism always existed, but they were littler. They were smaller. So nobody's going to go out and attack them. But now they're big. They're six foot one. They're 180 pounds. Um, and so, A, I think I was blind to the issues that existed in my own community because of the great, I guess, environment we had created for our family. And then second, unprepared, I felt I didn't prepare them. But I see as a parent the normal parental regrets, but I also think, wow, I gave them such great opportunities to be with people who look like them that I almost feel I forgot to prepare them for adulthood. I think that no matter what you do, you're gonna, you're gonna look back and, and find some things, but the, the benefit that you can have from your experience is, is to say to the, the, the newer group, the rookies that are coming in that are just now adopting a, a child of color and giving them the benefit of your wisdom to advance their, their child and their parenting endeavors as well. So um, I certainly appreciate you, you coming on and sharing your experience. Well, and it's also hard, you know, if a child is of unknown ethnicity or known multiple ethnicities, sometimes there's a struggle of why do they have to choose? You know, um, especially if they're one, if it's like in a biological situation and you've got where they've got multiple races and it's one side raising them, is there a natural tendency to reject the other side or in an adoptive situation? you're not sure where your inside loyalties may be, and is it fair to make them choose? But I sit here and think, well, when are we gonna get to a point they don't have to choose, And but will in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, will people look at the totality of our children rather than picking a skin color? I know we've moved the bar on gender. You know, women are most of the time considered equal to men. Um, there's still some room to go there. Will we get there? I hope so. And I hope it's conversations like this. And, and, you know, for me, having three of the four kids are black men, statistics say they're going to end up in jail or dead. And I don't accept that. I reject that. They are amazing, beautiful people. And they have a better future than that. As parents who have children that are at risk for low educational achievement, low um, income earning potential, We've got to pour into them that they reject those. Now, are are there are there any, um, I guess, race specific ideals that you've taught your kids specifically because they're black? And and I always go to the the black families that we talk to. You know, at the forefront of their their mind is always you have to teach them how to interact with the police. You know, uh, yes, you have that police conversation and it's always a sensitive subject because I'm really good friends with a lot of police officers. And police officers sometimes take it personally when you tell them that you've had this conversation with your kid. I said, but you know, just remember, it takes only one bad person. Most police officers out there are great people. It takes one bad person. And we know there's one bad person in every profession, but it takes one bad person for the outcome to be much different. So I have had that conversation and you just don't want your child to make the wrong moves that put themselves in harm's way. I've always told my kids, if you feel unsafe, just do what it takes to stay alive, we'll get an attorney. But so I always made sure that I had books that reflected people of color because we seem to relegate the history of African Americans to one month. So we've got a lot of untold stories. So making sure that there were books, dolls that look like him, um, Santas, I, I have a little Santa collection, making sure I've got some Santas of color. So trying to make sure they can see themselves in other people. And I've been lucky being in politics that all of my kids have gotten to meet governors, Senators, representatives, judges have gotten to know a wide array of people, a wide array of people, including people that look like them. 
They have feet in two worlds and they adapt to the best that they can. I mean, with, with Dwayne and Tori, they see their dad on a regular basis as well as their mom and all of their siblings are, are also biracial. So they have a little bit of a net, I guess a network of people who look like them that are family. So another phenomenon that we've, that we've come across and that we've learned about is that there, there appears to be two different definitions for the word racism. And among our white circles, the common definition of is that in order for something to be racist, it has to include some element of hate. Um, and among the black community, they, they don't believe that there has to be an element of hate, there has to be an element of superiority, whether intentional or unintentional. Um, so there seems to be a dichotomy there with people even being able to agree on exactly what it means to be racist. What have biases? What is it we're bringing to the table? What are harmless biases? If you happen to love somebody with brown eyes, great. I don't think that's harming the world. But when you start taking these biases and they start determining all your actions, that's when you can start harming other people, even if you don't think you're going to. I mean, we, we saw this, you know, in, in Germany with Hitler. Um, so if we can examine our own biases and maybe be open to learning, one of the things I really enjoyed doing was every year I would go to the big Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. We couldn't go this year because of COVID, but held down at Mount Zion. And it was just so nice to be here to celebrate a person who transformed our country. But also, look at Hidden Figures. That was such an incredible <laughs> movie. I, if I can keep up in that room. Just make that pencil move as fast as your mind does. You've been gone for 300 hours. It felt like it to me, too. Colonel Glenn launches in a few weeks. We don't have the man figured out yet. There's no protocol for women attending. There's no protocol for a man circling the earth either, sir. Every time we have a chance to get ahead, they move the finish line. I need to be in that room hearing what you hear. Within these walls, who makes the rules? You, sir, you are the boss. You just have to act like one, sir. Have we all get there together, we don't get there at all. In the fight of our lives, people. My gals are ready. We can do the work. More than 50 million Americans watching. I got a warning light. Go find Catherine. Colonel Glenn. There's a real fireball outside. It's getting a little hot in here. people who are different than me they challenge me they make me a better person and so I think when we're talking about race relations and especially for those of us who are white ask some questions ask the person say can I just ask you some some honest questions and if it's a dumb question I'm not going to take offense if you say it's a dumb question but I just really don't know and let them ask those dumb questions all right, here's the million dollar question. So you've walked it, you've lived it, you've experienced it. Uh, what advice do you have for potential adoptive families that are going to adopt a black and uh, a black child and now they're gonna be a mixed race family? Uh, wh what advice do you have for them? What do you wish they knew? Know that you're gonna always make mistakes. That's a part of parenting. That doesn't matter if you're chit, your children are biological, adopted, one race or another race. Look outside of what you know. Try to figure out what you don't know. So videos like this, talking to friends who look like your child, even if they're actually of a different ethnicity, because your child's going to be labeled.
letting them know you're the safe place to fall. Um, sometimes what our kids may say have to hurt, but we're the only place, safe place they can say it. So be that safe place. Try not to get offended. It may hurt in your heart, but try to figure out when you just need to listen versus defend whomever.